What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is February 28th, and we are joined by uh, Francis Ellis today. Roan could not make it. Uh, before we get into that, though, I just want to say make sure you like the episode and subscribe to the YouTube. Also, I want to say I will be in Albany, New York, Poughkeepsie, New York, this week, March 2nd and 3rd. And then I'm going to be in Toronto, March 17th, that weekend. And then I'm going to be in Austin, Texas for Moon Tower Comedy Festival. And then Francis and I are going to be in San Francisco at Cobb's Comedy Club, April 28th and 29th. And I'm going to be in Detroit, Michigan, May 18th, 19th and 20th. And we're going to be in Charlestown, West Virginia at the Charlestown Casino and Raceway uh, for Fran Squatch. The two of us are going to be co-headlining a gig down there that's may 12th you can get tickets for that just google it right now but it'll probably be on my website francisellis.com where, where are people getting tickets for your shows? oh yeah all of my stuff is going to be on my link tree on my instagram my twitter nice I do have a website that i'm it's coming out soon good yeah good you deserve one uh guys you can see me i'm on tour right now the hero we need tour francisellis.com coming to a city near you all over everywhere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We had a nice little time. Yeah, we went to Long Island. That was Long fun. Beach. Long Beach. Long Island. By the way, you're going to um you're going to Poughkeepsie. Yeah. So the there the river up there, which is the Hudson. Yeah. What's interesting about that part of the world is that the Hudson River actually flows in both directions. Oh, okay. The current changes. That's on. That's very unusual for a river. That is very unusual for a river. So you can make some jokes about going both ways. All right. That's something I did when I was there. <laughs> yeah. Just giving yeah. you. I'm giving you a piece of local, a local bit. Yeah. That you can start off with, where they'll be like, "Well, you called our river bisexual." <laughs> <laughs> it's right off the right off the jump. Yeah, they probably get that a lot. I wonder if they do. Probably not. No, I they probably I, just get a lot of people saying that they live in a piece of shit city <laughs> poughkeepsie yeah yeah i actually kind of don't mind poughkeepsie no it's close too which i'm happy about it's relatively close they've got some good schools i think uh marist is up there yeah um is. and maybe some others so there's a big college scene yeah you'll get some kids out yeah i'm doing one show in albany and then two in poughkeepsie nice nice would i have rather had it the other way around Maybe more shows in Albany. Yeah. And fewer shows in Poughkeepsie. Yeah. I think you will like Poughkeepsie more than you'll like Albany. If I had to guess, I have no idea. I just know Albany's selling better than. I see. I see what you're saying. That's interesting. I think the Poughkeepsie room is smaller. No, it's much bigger. What? Or no, the, no, the Poughkeepsie room is smaller. Yeah. We'll yeah. Mix that was up. Yeah. But the Albany people, is like three fifty. Yeah. It's in the mall. The ba- the the Poughkeepsie room is uh, in a bar and they have good food and stuff and yeah. it's a lively place that people come to hang out. Hell yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to go back on the road. I haven't been on the road since Boston. So how are you going to get up there? Train probably. Nice. Yeah. If I had a car, I would drive. Uh huh. I don't. Could rent one, but then the thing is, when you rent those cars, you got to there's like nowhere to bring them. Do you have a driver's license? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like you can't. I can't. Um. Cause you're going somewhere that like, like when I did, when I rented a car to go to Rochester, it wasn't somewhere I could bring a car. It, like, it's not like when you get it from like Hertz or something like that, you can bring it and drop it off. Mm-hmm. So I just had to have it in Rochester the whole time. And then I got charged every day, even though it was just sitting in a parking lot. Cause I had to drive it back. I don't understand. Like when you, when you rent a car with like Hertz, if I was going to like Albany, there's probably a Hertz there. Oh, you could leave it. You can drop it off and then they only charge you for one day and then you could rent another car to come home. (laughs) Why would you rent two cars? So that you don't get charged for the days that you're there when you're not using the car. I see what you're saying. You only need the car to get up there yeah. and back. Yeah. So you don't want to really have a car. Expensive. You don't want to have a car while you're up there to go do random things. Drive to no, the. No, so I'm not going to do anything. You don't want to go get coffee. No. And Maybe if I a, did. I would just Uber Eats it or get a, it from the hotel. A bagel. No. I don't eat until I go to the comedy club and then I eat something and then I go diarrhea for 45 minutes. <laughs> Wait and a second. I go up on stage. You don't eat anything until you go to the club for the whole days, day? Yeah. 
but I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that this weekend. This weekend, I'm like, not gonna, I think I'm just going to try and not drink. Let me ask you something. What is it that you, what, <laughs> what got you into this mindset of just treating yourself so poorly? It's not a, it's not like a, I don't want to do that. It's just, it happens. Why? I have bad habits. Do you think that you gl- glamorize? Um, no, not, not at all. I not being a, a kempt person? No, because I was a very well health. I was a very super healthy person for a while. And then I stopped working out and then everything just came crumbling down. Cause like I, I, like I used to go to the gym every day and I would eat like only like chicken and broccoli. I think it's because I, I go so hard when I go to the gym that becomes like my entire thing is like, I'm, oh, I'm a workout dude now. And I eat, so I like weigh all my food and shit. Like I had like food scales going, what like tracking my calories. Why? Cause I was trying to get super ripped and I did. Did you? For a couple months. Do you have any shirtless pics? No, don't worry about it. I would. I am not worried. I'm intrigued. I not, like, they're not like. Eh, I don't feel like going through that. You have some though. No, not on this phone. Do you have any pics of your best bod? I could find them. Yeah, I'd like to see those. I'd like to see. It'd be fun to see how far you've fallen. I was. I, I got. So I went. So when I first started working out, it was like. Uh, it was senior year of high school, and I didn't know anything about like nutrition. So I decided to just eat chicken and broccoli for every meal. Little did I know that I was actually in a super big calorie uh, deficit. So I didn't get big. I just got super skinny. Oh, and you weren't eating enough. I wasn't eating. I wasn't eating enough at all. So I was like, I lost all. I was like, I was like 10% body fat, which is like pretty low. That's good. And uh, I had like abs and. And but I was skinny as fuck, mm. like too skinny. Like and you were freaky, trying like to Timothy get muscu- Chalamet skinny. You were trying to get muscular. And then I then I learned about all of it. And then what do you know I, now? I know like I, I know like what like I need like macros wise. What's that? What do you mean? What do you need macros wise? Like I know like I know how to like calculate it. Like I know I know how many carbs I need, how much protein I need, how much fat I need. Do you know that off the top of your head? No, but it's easy as fuck to find out. Well, then it sounds like you don't know it. Dude, you just open up BMI calculator or like macro oh, calculator. You got an app? No, you look look it up. You just look up macro calculator and then you type in your weight and your height and then what you want, what your goal is, and then it tells you everything that you need to eat. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh so then I and I like then when I got back into I mean, I never stopped working out, but then I was like, all right, I'm gonna bulk. And I didn't really get as into it because I was at college. So I wasn't like tracking my calories i was kind of just like all right i know i need more protein i know i need more carbs just kind of like rough doing a rough scale of it and then uh and then i got bigger but then when i really got like when i put on a lot of mass muscle was probably like last year or two years ago i guess now and then i got like strong Mm. i was deadlifting like 225 nice and i could bench 185 for one rep sick and uh, and uh and that was when I was strong as fuck for me. Mm-hmm. And then I got COVID and then I have probably been to the gym 10 times since then. And that was over a year ago. Damn. Yeah. We got to get you back, man. And then I started doing stand up, and then it's like, I can only, I'm like, I, I have hard times focusing on more than one thing at once. So like at that time it was like working out was like, like work was like in the back burner. Could working we not, out was planned was the first thing. Could we not reframe? The way that you look at all of this and say that you working out and eating well is going to help you with your work with stand up. No, I think it would because I'd feel better and I'd be more energetic. I think you'd have more energy. Yeah. I look at you and I look, I think I'm worried about you. Yeah. 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 Well, the problem is it's just like, like my killing yourself. Yeah. My sleep schedule is fucked. I, I, I don't eat that bad. Mm -hmm. I don't eat super unhealthy. I, I usually try and eat like relatively healthy. It's more just like, and I actually have cut back on drinking a good bit. I really only drink on the weekends now. And even then it's like, sometimes I don't even drink on the weekends. Oh. And I also do stand up sober pretty much all the time now. That's good. I'm good. glad you got rid I'm of that mindset. That. Well, I also realized I just sucked at stand up when I was drunk. Yeah. Because I would like, I would be like on stage and I'd be like, damn, I'm fucking killing. Mm. And then I'd watch the tapes and there'd be like 40 second pauses in between words. <laughs> and I'd be like, dude, I look fucking so dumb right now. Yeah. So, yeah. But the plan is when I move, 
Uh, I'm going to start cooking for myself again. When are you moving? Uh, I think I'm going to move at the end of March. Nice. Yeah. Where are you going to move to? Are you going to live alone? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. You're going to get a sweet pad? Probably not. How much How much are you willing? What's your budget? Uh, I'd probably cap out at like, right now I pay 1800 probably more like 2000 with like all the Wi-Fi and shit. And then I'd probably be okay. Like 3000 I'd be fine with. I, I don't think I would, I don't think I'd want to do four. I think you can go to four. I think I, I think I could. I don't want to though. Yeah, but you'll see a place. You'll see a place that's four and it's going to be a lot better than the place that's three and a half. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't like, I don't like spending money. Yeah, but here's the thing. You haven't paid rent since <laughs> I wrote out my rent check today. My landlord just doesn't ask for rent. It's kind of like a, we're like on like a trust, we're on a tr trust system. <laughs> and I haven't, I was doing the math today and I was like, I was like, oh shit, I'm going to, I should bring my, cause I have nothing to do today after this. So I was like, maybe I'll go bring my rent to my landlord. And then I decided I'm not to, cause it's so he, it's a very shitty system. Like any other place that I've lived, it's been like, there's a portal yeah. or Venmo, Zelle, anything. This is, you got to bring in a, a, a handwritten check. Yeah. To the land, you had to bring it to his apartment. I've done that before, and uh, he lives all the way up by Central Park, mm. which it's not that it's not that that's far, but it's that his apartment is a like a fifteen minute walk off the train, mm. which I'm like, eh. Why don't you mail it to him? I'm gonna do this. I decided I'm gonna do that today ahead of time, and uh, but I have to pay. I'm paying. <laughs> I'm paying five months of rent today. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure this guy's still alive? I don't know, dude. Yo, that's, not. there's no okay, chance no, no. you owe so, rent. Just don't but no, pay but, it. But the, la but the thing is, every time I've paid rent, it's been like that. I've probably paid rent three times in the last year and a half. And you just and trust it's been, that you'll catch up? And it's up? been like four month payments. Man. So I haven't paid rent since November. Is your roommate paying rent? I have no idea. Do we have in he it got to a point where he was like on our ass for a bit being like, I'm gonna have to start charging you guys late fees. And that was when I brought in like a shit ton of months. Yeah. And I paid like months ahead too. Cause I was like, I know I'm so bad at this and I just want to get it over with. Mm. And, uh, I legitimately, that was in November. I haven't heard a word from him since, but also we have this big mice problem and he's like refusing to do anything about it. So part of me wonders if he's like being like lenient about that because he knows uh. that he's fucking us <laughs> and that like no like people are people are moving out of the uh, apartment oh lots of people yeah like just like abandoning it because they're like this is fucking insane how many mice there are yeah how many are there i mean we were in our apartment on it's a million it was the you middle saw, of the you day saw them? middle of the them? day one just ran yeah. right when through. you were over there you saw mice yeah like every time yeah. what every time mm-hmm it hit oh. Mook. Yeah, it hit Mook in the a, foot. You see a bunch of them? Yeah. Mook yeah. Shit himself what was and dude, the apartment's <laughs> not dirty. The apartment is clean. Damn. And we've had, we've told him like a hundred times. We've had like the exter. He sends over the exterminator. It's just a super. Mm -hmm. It's just some dude. Mm -hmm. He comes over and like moves a bunch of shit around. And then it's like, <laughs> well, there's dust behind the stove. Why do you think you have mice? And then that's it. And then we're like, yeah, dude, that he left 10 minutes ago. We just saw three mice run through the kitchen. And he's like, all right, we're going to send someone over again tomorrow. And they come and they just don't do anything. And then it's like, so now since that's happened, he has been very, he went radio silent because I think he knows that he's fucking us. Because we asked to move out. I was like, hey, dude, the mice problem is out of control. We pretty much can't. <laughs> Well, no, I was like, I was like, dude, we can't go. We can't go in our living room. It's your whole building. It's yeah. not just yours. It's like but it's like, so like, we're like, I don't leave my room. Because my room, I have like a draft guard so the mice can't get in. It's like sealed off completely. Do you walk into your bedroom like like uh, as though you're not letting a cat out? Like no, you just I'm, squeeze but, but I, I, never, I never go to the bathroom or anything and leave my door open. And if I do, if, I, if I'm like, I'll be like taking a piss and I'll be like, fuck, did I close my door? And I'll cut the piss off and go back and close the door and then go back to the bathroom. <laughs> because, dude, I've woken up in the middle of the night to mice on my in my room. Oh, and no. And that's not a feeling that I've ever, I ever want to experience again. <laughs> so, like, dude, we don't have, like, we, we moved where our trash is. Like, we don't have, the, our room, our apartment is clean as fuck. Yeah. And we still have so much mice. Shoot. You know what? Why don't you get a cat? I kind of want to get a cat, dude. We're all moving away from each other. Yeah. We're not living together anymore. Or a snake. Yeah. That would be way worse. But 
<laughs> I'd rather have mice. mice. I'd rather have mice than have a snake <laughs> slithering around the apartment. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, it sucks. But uh, so I think I'm just going to get out of there at the end of this month. Break your lease? No, I mean, our lease is up in May 1st. Oh, you just. I think I'm just going to bail a month early. Just pay it. Yeah. That's not a fun situation. I mean, we've been, we just fucked up. Like we've been in there. We're going to be there for 16 months, Uh huh. which we should have just signed a year. But it was like, we were like, holy shit. We're in West village. Like this is because we were in hell's kitchen before. So we're like, this is fucking nuts. Like let's stay here for as long as we can. Yeah. And it wasn't even bad. Like it was pretty like, I mean, I still love the area. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it didn't get bad. Like the mice problem wasn't even until like probably September, November. <laughs> yeah. It took over. And then it went away. And then they went away for a while. And then they came back harder than ever. <laughs> they fully invaded. But it's like, so I, so I sent the landlord an email and I was like, Hey dude, uh, we can't use almost all of our apartment because unless you want mice running around your feet, Blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, is there any chance we could break the lease and get out of here early? And he was like, unfortunately, no. I was like, what do you mean, unfortunately, no? You make the rule. <laughs> Don't try and act like you're upset about it, too. It's like you could easily just be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's not like, like he owns the he owns the building. Mm-hmm. I think he means unfortunately for you. Yeah, he should have said that. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, and then Owen, my roommate, who, you know, he. uh he sent him an email and it was like, this was after the exterminator came again. And he was like, dude, this is insane. Like the mice problems out of control. He's like, you guys need to do something about this. Like, it's like not okay. And then he called him and he was like, my mother's in the hospital, like the landlord. And he was like, dude, no. that doesn't have anything to do with the fucking mice. Mm-hmm. There's mice in our apartment. <laughs> also, no shot. There's yeah. Also, yeah. Your mom's yeah, not in no the hospital. Shot. He's like 90. Dude, your mom's been dead for 80 years. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, seriously, he's like, he's like an old, like West Village dude. You know, it's like your mom is not alive. It's so funny. I, I, I'm thinking now I, I've lived. I'm, I'm 33. I've lived in New York since I was 22. And in those 11 years, I think I've lived in eight different apartments. So I've moved good. a lot of times. I've lived in, this is my third apartment. I've only been here for, I guess that's on track to be the same. Yeah. Um, and I've had, I've had a lot of interesting experiences. I've had some really bad experiences. The worst experience I had, I uh, was in my old apartment when I lived in Chelsea. Yeah. And it was on the, it was a garden apartment. So it was on the like the ground floor and the bedroom was, you know, there was a glass door out into this little garden area and there was no insulation. Yeah. And the heating didn't work really that well. And so in the winter when it got cold, I mean, my room would be, I'd be sleeping and it would be 52 degrees. Yeah. That's fucking insane. 52. You could see your breath. (laughs) That's fucking nuts. And I, I mean, there was, I, there was no amount of blankets. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like when you go try to summit Everest and you just accept that when you're sleeping in camp three, yeah, you're, you're gonna, gonna be cold. Yeah, yeah. It's not gonna, you know, you're you're not gonna be warm sleeping. Yeah, yeah. But it was New York City, Chelsea. Yeah, that's an fucked. expensive neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not <laughs> Nepal. Yeah. So um I brought it up so many times. They would buy me a $20 space heater and send that. That didn't really help that much. Those are dangerous too, right? Sure. Yeah. Those they, things just explode. They also, yeah. And people leave them on and they burn Bye. down, yeah. you know, tenement housing, I think. And uh, finally, you know, we, one night I had to go sleep in a hotel because it was so cold you did i did that with when the mice first came that's kind of a treat though it was awesome when you go sleep in a hotel you can't can't live in your own home yeah i've actually do that twice it kind of makes me feel like divorce would be okay yeah i had to do that when i was living in east village and both my roommates were out of town and i came back from massachusetts and i forgot my keys left them at home Mm. and i called my landlord and i was like hey man i can't get into my apartment it was like noon and he was like, sorry, man, I got a dentist appointment today. Wow. I was like, all right, well, what about the fucking 10 hours when you don't have a dentist appointment? Yeah. You didn't let me into my house. That's crazy. So I had to get a hotel. Where did you go? 
you remember what hotel it was? Dude, it was like a nice ass hotel, but it was like in the height of COVID. It was actually, I remember it being like super eerie because mm. there was, I was the only person there. And I remember walking down this long ass hall and it's just complete silence. Yeah, spooky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was nice. Man, you never stay in hotels in New York City, but when you do, it's kind of a treat. Are they small? <laughs> They're not that bad. Some are okay. Some are not so bad. They're definitely not like other places when you go to hotels. Mm-hmm. They're much different. One time I was dating a girl um, for a long, long time and we lived together. And is this your wife? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but it's funny to say one time I was dating a girl for a really long, long time and we lived together. Just that once. <laughs> once upon a time in my life, the most significant relationship other than the one I'm currently in, which is a marriage. Uh, anyway, we broke up and she was, you know, um, she like left, but had, to, hadn't moved out completely. And so we had a bunch of, you know, pictures and stuff up or of us. And she, I think she was going, she was moving to another state. And, um, so there, it was all still in there and I was single then. And, and then I had a girl that I met who I wanted to hang out with. Yeah. But I couldn't bring her over to my home because there's pictures everywhere. It just looked like a shrine to my <laughs> yeah, yeah, now yeah. ex-girlfriend. Yeah. And so I got us a hotel room. Yeah. And she was like, what? That's weird. You know, it's tough to explain to a girl yeah, who, who you've like met at a bar or whatever where you're like, yeah. She's like, where do you live? And you're like, I live in Brooklyn. Yeah. And she's like, cool. And then hours later, she's like, you want to get out of here? And you're like, hold on, let me check hotels tonight. Oh yeah, that's. <laughs> Cause she's like, she's like, what do you mean? Why can't we go the fifteen minutes home? Yeah. To your apartment, and you're like, ah, there's a mice problem. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea either. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that was a fun night. But then, yeah, then you uh, hotels are fun. This show is brought to you by Better Help. Getting to know yourself can be a long process, especially because we're always growing and changing. I'm growing and I'm changing every day like a butterfly or like a caterpillar. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we, why we react the way we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. <laughs> Whether or not you, oh, whoops. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed by, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I like BetterHelp because I can text my therapist. I can call them. I can video chat with them. It's very easy. There's a lot of options. Discover your discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash sun to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sun. Yeah, they're not bad, except, I don't know, I'm kind of over hotels right now. When you're on the road and you're in a hotel, uh, do you just destroy the hotel room? Dude, I, I it it goes from I'm I, it's actually like I'm like a I wouldn't say like I can keep my room clean like I have to keep my room clean right because it's so small and because there's mice mm-hmm. so I can't let it get dirty right but dude the the pace that I'm able to make the room just like a bomb went off in there <laughs> is like I feel like someone might want to do like studies on it. <laughs> Like within within five minutes of I'm me a, being I'm there, with you, man. there's like underwear Some like across the room. The bets are off, and I don't dude. even know how it got there. All bets are yeah. off. You're just using full towels yeah. to wipe the jizz off your stomach. Yeah, and then you're looking at that on the floor, and you're like, uh oh, which yeah. one's clean? Yeah. I, don't, I need to shower again. Yeah, like I when I the worst is when I'm checking out and I gotta like walk all around my room and I'm like finding like shirts like tucked away in like corners and i'm like i don't even know what this is doing over here it's like you go in and you just start throwing things all over the yeah room. yeah it's, it's like actually you, it's insane. like you had a temper tantrum yeah. <laughs> it's like the more space they give me like the worse 
Yeah. Like, have you, have you ever been like, I got like an, I got like upgraded when we went to Plano. It's never happened to me. The dude was like a fan. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. It was really cool. At the hotel. Yeah. That's cool. And I'm uh, going there. I'm going there soon. So I hope that that happens I'm, to me. I bet he will be. And um, I think he's like a big bar stool fan. Hey, if you're listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> dude at the Plano Hotel. I'm coming in April. I hope that you give me an upgrade. Plano is not bad. Is it not it's bad? Not bad. Okay. It's a fun little area. Oh, there's actually a pool hall or pool bar literally next to the club. Is there? Right across the street. Turns into a very black bar at night. Oh. <laughs> I think we were the only white people there. I've been there before. to get a couple games in. I like the sound of that. <laughs> it's actually a fun ass night. I like those nights. Yeah. Where you just say, oh my gosh, I'm the only white guy. Yeah. It was fun. That's fun. Um, but yeah, it's a nice bar. Okay. Right across the street. We would play pool there for hours before the show. You and Mook? Yeah. How's Mook at pool? He's not bad. Are you guys He's, pretty level? No, I'm way better than him. You are? Way better. It depends on the Let's say you guys played 10 games. What would the score be? Yeah, it'd probably be like 9-1. Oh, that bad? Yeah. Damn. If I'm like, if I'm trying and I'm on, then yes. If I'm like, kind of like, I don't feel like doing this. I don't want to do this show tonight. Then it's more like even. I see. Or if I have a little bit of a tummy ache. My goal this weekend is to just not get a stomach ache. (laughs) 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 But I think that's going to require me having like three beers max. Yeah. Okay. Because I just can't. Like it's becoming so unsustainable and so miserable. Like waking up on the road, hungover, looking to your right, just a big ass whopper box next to you oh you're eating whoppers at night a a big gulp diet coke are you really you're eating whoppers like yes and no i'm usually pretty good about it but then there'll be one night where we just break and i just buy i think i buy out burger king for the night do you remember do you remember when we went to st louis yeah and the only thing that we would have at night was the stuff from the vending machine Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I saw yeah. the video of you selecting your things. Oh, uh, I don't, even, I don't know if I've ever seen it. It's fun. Yeah, I just remember. I think I went back <laughs> to the vending machine. Yeah, like when we we went. I went back to my I went to my room and then I went back to the vending machine. Why'd you do that? I wanted more. Oh, I wasn't satisfied. But you were buying trail mix and stuff, right? I yeah, don't I think probably bought the trail mix for you as a sh- as a little show. Did you? And then I went back and I got the fucking. Oh, <laughs> you don't have to worry about me. The Swedish fish and the Doritos. No, <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I it's wasn't like, gonna, gonna grab judge. some trail mix. What do you want, Francis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> do they have any of those quinoa crisps? <laughs> any of those alternative crisp things? Oh man. I uh that's good man well I you know it's been fun I like going on the road with you and, I, and you and I have bonded over pool ourselves yeah it's you're fun. the only person with whom I play pool yeah I've I've cut back on that as well a little bit but I'm pumped to uh go back on the road play some pool mm-hmm. pumped to go to Cobbs it's gonna be fun as fuck hell yeah what do you think our lifetime record is in pool you and me versus me I mean just from St. Louis alone we played for like nine hours. Yeah, we straight. played a lot of hours of pool yeah. in St. Louis. But that's also because there was just there was literally nothing else, nothing to, else do. to do. <laughs> that bar was crazy too. Yeah, it was. We we pulled up to this like bar that didn't even look like it was open. No, it, like it was like under construction. Mm-hmm. And we walked in, and there's just like a couple like ladies sitting there, just getting shit faced. Yeah, and it's like it had to have been one p.m. Yeah, at at best. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, we've seen Dave Attell before. Yeah. Is Dave with you guys? <laughs> Is that who it was that they said? <laughs> they all, seen? everywhere you go, everyone's like, oh, we've seen Dave Attell before. Okay. But they did say Dave Attell. Yeah. They were all so excited that we were there. Yeah. You know who I get a lot is I get Dave Attell and then I get, dude, I get Michael Rappaport all the time. People say they've gone to see him. They all say they've gone to see him. And then all the staff at every club, they're like, oh, Michael Rappaport was just here. He's such a sweetheart. Oh, wow. He's an angel. Nice. Yeah. That's, they all, every club I go to. That's interesting. Yeah. Everybody at Barstool has had a very different experience. Yeah, I know. I, I don't Rappaport. know anything about him. I just know that Dave fired him. Yep. Well, he and I oh, have you that had a, common. 
Oh yeah. Did you get, did you ever, were you here when he was here? Yes, I was. Did you guys ever talk? He told me to come fight him. <laughs> oh, nice. At, on Twitter. He said, meet me here. We're going to fight. And I didn't go because Smart I move. didn't, I wasn't upset. What was he trying to fight for? Uh, well, I think for some reason, um, he was mad at Donnie. And I think Donnie had said something and then he got mad at Donnie and was telling Donnie some ne- negative things. And then I told, I came in and I said, Donnie works at the company with us. He's our coworker. And then he said, why don't you come fight me? Something like that. Damn. He was very defensive. On People Twitter. love to threaten physical altercation when it's like, no one wants, why would you want that? I think that it's easy to do on, on the internet. And then if you actually were to do that in the streets, people are much more, oh, whoa, I didn't mean anything by that. Yeah, I don't want to have to go to work tomorrow to explain why I have a fucking busted eye. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I wouldn't want to get in a fight. What's? Have you ever hurt yourself? Have I ever hurt myself? Yeah, have you ever gotten really hurt? I broke my arm. How'd that happen? I almost got decapitated. What? Yeah. (laughs) Let's well, start yeah, with the arm. Hold that's on. That's actually a stretch. I want to hear that though. But I, how'd you break your arm? Uh, I was in fifth grade. Uh, it was my second day. I went to private school for one year because my parents thought I had something wrong with me. <laughs> and I, I, I just didn't want to do my homework. And I was also like nine. Yeah. Uh, it was my first day at school or second day at school. And I had a lunchbox that had a long strap and I was running trying to catch up to this kid who was in the same next class as me that I didn't know where it was. And I tripped over my lunchbox and I flew through the air and I landed on my arm and it broke. <sighs> and then I, sque- I squealed around on the floor until the nurse came. Was it where in here, here or here? Uh, here down here. Yeah. So your radius, I don't know what it's called. But it broke big time. Golly. Was it through the skin? No. Compound no. fracture? No, but it was uh what is that called? When it when it goes through the skin? A compound. Compound. Fracture. What is it when it breaks in two places? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Broke in multiple places. And then and then they had to re break it oh. to put it back in place. Do, do you have lasting pain or issues as a result of that? No, not at all. I mean, I, I remember I didn't cry. For starters, you pretty squealed, cool. which sounds I squealed, worse. which is a lot worse. Yeah, but I didn't cry. Yeah, and then when they rebroke it. I didn't cry either. I do remember the most painful part of the entire thing was they were uh, injecting me with like a numbing thing, and they had to put it in the bone. Oh God! And I was getting an X-ray, and I could see the needle getting closer and closer to the oh, bone. It was like a live X-ray, oh, <laughs> and. <laughs> And when it hit the bone, I remember that that was probably the most pain I've ever been in. Hi. Yeah. Still didn't cry though. Ho Chi Minh City. Probably because I was probably on a shit ton of drugs. Yeah. And yeah. then I remember they were like, okay, uh, it's not going to hurt now for another couple hours. So they were like, but make sure you keep it in the sling and you don't like throw it around. And I was like, I remember walking out of the, walking out of the hospital, just like fucking Conor McGregor walking out of <laughs> yeah, there yeah, being yeah. like, yeah, this doesn't hurt at all. Dude. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? And then like, I think I, I think I cried when I got home. <laughs> I remember when I got home, it hurt so fucking much. Sheesh. And I remember I was trying to play video games and I couldn't cause it hurt too much. Well, they were, uh, did they have, they didn't have you in a cast? No, I wasn't a cast. Oh yeah. Oh, in a sling. Yeah. I see. Um, Okay, you got to de- almost got decapitated. So this was actually the same year, probably, or it might have been a year after. And I, I, I that was a, that was a long, that was a stretch. I think almost getting decapitated, you would have to have gotten to classify as that. I think like half of it would have been open. But I was biking, and uh, there was this like path that would lead to the parking lot of our high school mm-hmm. through the woods. And there would always be traffic. So the high schoolers, they would go through that path with their cars. They wouldn't have to wait in line. Mm-hmm. And it became like a big thing. And the town put up these like metal wires oh. to block it off so that cars couldn't get through there. Yeah. And I was biking down the street super fast and I didn't see the wire. 
and just fucking clotheslined from like a thin metal wire. Oh. And it literally took me off my bike. And like I had like a gash like all along my neck. Mm. And I remember I went, I was sleeping over at this kid's house that night. Nice. We were like hanging out. Yeah. And I remember I, my mom came to pick me up and like her, his, I don't know. He had a little bit of an odd family. Oh. And what I do you remember, mean? eh. <laughs> They had drugs and everything. Oh, and it's not really odd so much as it is criminal. Life. Yeah, yeah. But I remember my mom came and picked me up the next morning. Why was like, she letting you sleep over there? I don't think she knew. Oh. I don't think I knew. How and did you know at that age that they all had drugs? I don't think I did. But then how do you know? My, I remember my mom told me I wasn't allowed to go over there anymore, and I was like, why not? And she said she'd seen the drugs? No, but I grew up with the kid after that. And he said my family has drugs? No, I just know. I just knew his family. I wasn't like good friends with him after that, but I just like, it's, you know, they were a, f a family of drugs. They all were doing drugs. <laughs> they were doing them. Yeah. They weren't like selling drugs. Oh, I thought it was like a family business. No, no, no. Um, that's crazy that they <laughs> were all I, doing I, drugs together. I don't, I don't know. I, the, the drugs part's not the biggest detail of the story. I got excited <laughs> about that part. You don't, by the way, you don't get to tell <laughs> <No>. me. <laughs> <laughs> what I can like. It's like the most irrelevant story. part of the story was that my no. mom didn't want me to hang out with some kid when I was like 10. Am I wrong in thinking <laughs> that like you be sleeping over at a drug den? It wasn't a drug den. It sounds It was like the cool. most normal sleepover of all time. The bad part was that when I, when my mom came to pick me up the next morning, I walked out of the house and there was fucking like a three centimeter gash going through my entire neck. And like the dude's dad never, or parents never even told my mom. Cause they were high. Yeah. And she just picked me up like that and i had like a fucking like, like a fucking scab like slice over my entire neck and yeah. my mom was like what the fuck does that how she did she find out then about the drugs no i don't know how she found out about the drugs i could ask her do you think when <laughs> the kid's dad came out to hand you oh off actually your... i do remember uh yeah, yes good when when, good. <laughs> when it, my mom came to pick me up at like uh 10 a.m and the kid's dad had like his breath like reeked of booze or something. Oh, but then she might have only thought that they were big drinking family, not not drugs. Too. There was something with drugs. I don't know. Mm. He had like older siblings who were like getting arrested and stuff. Um, for trafficking drugs from the house. No, no, for like possession of drugs. Just possessing. <laughs> yes, they weren't drug dealers. Why I, did you like? I, they this probably kid? were drug dealers. Why'd you like this kid, dude? I was in fourth grade. He was in like two, he was in my class. So you just didn't really have you the ability. You just get paired up with people at that age. Yeah, you didn't, couldn't discern. No. Mm. And I think I remember liking him because we would go over to his house and there would be no rules. Because their parents were busy <laughs> were on drugs. weighing yeah. shit out. Yeah. You'd go over and you'd just fucking go on the roof of the house and like shoot BB guns and stuff. Yeah, I knew, I knew and those like types of people. light fireworks off. I knew those kinds of yeah. kids. That was crazy, those kids. When you, yeah. because as a well to do kid, you always thought, oh my God, what I'm this is so fun not to have rules. Yeah. But then at the same time, you had that crisis of conscience where you said, ooh, I, maybe what my parents said all along was meant to protect me. Yeah. And therefore, the fact that we are now mixing five different types of lighter fluid <laughs> yeah. in this yeah. trash can we found. <laughs> We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to stand farther back yeah. than the other kids. And then maybe this will be the last time I hang out with them. No, I don't think I was. I think I remember being really mad that I was not to hang out with that kid anymore. But then we got older and we weren't friends anymore. What's up? What's he up to now? No idea. I haven't. I haven't. Did he fall? Him. Did he fall apart? He dropped out of high school. Yeah. We haven't talked. But I Going remember like we were like st still really good friends. Like school friends. We had like a bunch of classes together. When everybody got to an age where drinking and doing drugs was cool, did that kid kind of hit a, a cool zone because everyone? No, I think he was already in pretty deep at that point. Oh. That it like wasn't cool. Oh, he. There were kids like that too, though, that like when everyone started drinking and then they'd just go, they'd really dive in and they'd be like drinking in school and shit. And you'd be like, Dude. oh. Maybe don't do that. You knew kids that would drink before school? Yeah. Did you? 
No, never. No, uh, no, no. I never, never did. ever did anything like that. No. I would have been way, way too scared. I'm trying to think if I did ever like senior year before like a half day or something, but I don't think I did. I wasn't so bored of school that I needed to be fucked up for it. School no. is hard. I think I remember we were like going to do that once for like during like a, like one of our last days of school, we were going to get like fucked up for school. And then I think we were like, now that we have to get to school by 7 a.m. That sounds yeah. fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. There there were kids. I mean, I just, I can't think, like, think now knowing what you know about drinking, right? Yeah. But it's also different then because you don't, there's, no, there's literally no negative effects of drinking when you're that young. Okay. But this is my point. Like, there's none. Imagine if someone said to you, hey, dude, how's your Saturday looking? And you said, it's pretty free. And I yeah. said- Great. I have a really fun idea for us. Let's go get fucked up and then sit in a geometry class together. You would say that sounds like the worst place for us to go to be fucked up. Why? Yeah, why but I kind of disagree at the same time. No, you wouldn't want to learn about congruent triangles. But I think also like when you're that young and you're like doing something like illegal like that, I think it's like it's kind of like the excitement of like, oh, I hope I don't get caught. Like, I remember we went on a school trip when I went on a school trip and I was with all my best friends. We had free time. We went and we got fucked up. Where was it? Europe. You went on one of those trips? You were one of those kids that got to go on the Europe trip? Uh, I went senior year. I never got to go on one of those. Yeah. Never got asked. I, I wasn't supposed to go. I got, I wiggled my way in. My, some of my two best friends were going and they were going for, it's like all like optional but then I found out that like our our uh, group, like our whole, like our girlfriend group was going too. And I was like, oh shit, this is going to be a blast. So I wiggled my way through and I like emailed the professor. I didn't even have the teacher. It wasn't even my teacher. And I was like, hey, uh, could I come on this? And they were like, yeah, sure. And I went and I remember we would, that was like the most fun I've ever had in my life. Like getting fucked up and like being in Europe with the whole class on like a tour. And, and like, you didn't have chaperones? No, we did. But they'd be like, you have an hour of free time and everyone would go like see the sites and we'd go to like Papa Gino's or Papa John's and fucking. Papa Juan's. Yeah. Yeah. No, they had like, they had like dominoes and shit in like yeah. Paris. And we would go there and we'd just get like, we'd drink as much beer as we possibly could in like 30 minutes. Yeah. And then we'd like buy gum and then we'd go back. And they wouldn't smell your breath or look at your bloodshot eyes or anything like that? No. Uh, towards the end, I think they had to have known because I remember I did, uh, we got like really, really fucked up the last night mm -hmm. and we had like a big bus. We were on like a tour bus. Sure. And... I think I sang Lil Uzi Vert through like the PA system on the tour bus <laughs> while we were driving home. The fact that Lil Uzi Vert was. I think I sang relevant tour life when you were in high school. Was, yeah. We had a kid, Bruce. I can't remember what his last name was. Yeah. But his name was Bruce. He went on one of those trips. Yeah. Everybody loved Bruce. Yeah. But he got fucked up on that trip. They get in trouble. And uh, I don't even think they do the trips anymore. They we're smelled his breath. And then he got caught and it was a big deal when they all came back that Bruce got suspended. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I remember me and my buddies tried to sneak out of the hotel one night, which this was actually probably a good thing that we got caught because we were like 16 yeah. or 17. You needed to be corrected. The fact it would probably wouldn't have been a good thing if we were wandering the streets of Florence yep. at like three in the morning yep. by ourselves, three American boys. And, um, we, we, we broke out and then the teacher from her hotel room yelled down to us and was like, get back inside right now. Oh shit. And we were like, oh, we were just going for a walk. Yeah. And I think we got in a lot of trouble for that. Damn. Yeah. That was super fun. That was the only time I've ever been to Europe. Really? Yeah. So you have a passport? I do. That's good. Uh, would you ever go back to Europe? Do you have any? Oh, I would love to go back you, to Europe. You like to travel? Yeah. Cool. I like to go to like, uh, like, like I, I, I like going out West. Yeah. In America. I know that. And I like going to, uh, <laughs> and also I would, I would love to go back to uh, Italy. Really? Yeah. What do you like about Italy? The architecture. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Also, I love Peroni. Uh-huh. It's good. They got Peronis on draft out there. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's cool that you like architecture. 
Yeah, I mean, I just like, I'm not like, I'm not like fascinated by it, but it just looks cool. Are you walking around with your head pointed up? Yeah. I'd go back to Florence too. Florence is just a little more low key. Oh, really? Florence is pretty small. Yes. I've been there a couple of times. Compared to Rome. Rome. Not Rome. You have, Rome is your co-host. I do, yes. Uh, In Rome, you've been to Rome? I went to Rome. So over that trip, it was like a week. And I went to Paris, which was uh, whatever Paris. And then we were there for a couple days. And then we took a train, an overnight train to Florence. Cool. And then from there, we went to Rome. Cool. And then we went home. Rome to home. But Paris, I remember just being like, this just feels like New York. Yeah. Which kind of does. Yeah. There's a busy city. It is. I remember shotgunning beers in the Louvre. <laughs> at the McD- We bought beers at the McDonald's. Uh-huh. And we just went over to a corner of the, like the mall area or the food court area and we shotgun beers there and then we went in and we saw the Mona Lisa the Mona Lisa that's kind of fun did you watch the Murdoch uh, documentary I did not know I think you'd like it yeah I'm gonna watch it you kind of remind me of some of them yeah you know what I started watching was Succession you haven't seen that no it's fucking good yeah it's one of the better shows it's that's come out in the last really 10 years fucking good yeah dude I always saw clips of it and I was like this show looks gay as fuck oh damn with all like the quick zooms and like the I don't know if it, that show out of context I could see people not liking uh-huh but well I didn't like it but then I watched dude, I mean like w- the first episode is fucking amazing it's awesome like right off the bat you're like this show's awesome yeah yeah. So you say it looks gay as fuck. Yeah. So what what um is that okay for you to say? Are we is that okay now? I don't know, I think. Are you gonna cut that? No. Nah. Oh. Well now we might. <laughs> <laughs> is it now I, that you're confronting me on it? Is it back? To, I say it all the time. I don't think to it say gay bashedly. I'm not saying it bashedly. I think you bashed. I'm just saying it's gay as fuck. Yeah, that's bad. Don't call me out on don't call me out on my words. I'm gonna highlight this. <laughs> I'm gonna stay on it. I like to fixate on the things that you want to move on from. Well, I'm like not that kid whose family did drugs. Oh uh, well, no. You see, you were saying you were talking about what is it, Bruce? That was his name. Yeah, Bruce. Bruce. When was the last time you saw Bruce? Not a long. It's been a long time. Okay, I saw this kid probably like three years ago. There's a chance he might listen to this yeah, show. Yeah, but he's, you know, he's in jail. <laughs> no. He's he needs this from he's you. He's probably like in jail and he's like the one free hour of free time I get a week. I like to watch Son of a Boy Dad yeah, podcast. I, I know. And, and watch I, my old friend on the big screen. I bet you And now I'm like shit talking his family on a podcast. I'll tell you what. I bet you he's had this thought. Man, I used to be best friends with little Sasquatch. No. Now he used to come over to our house and nobody watched us. We would hang out on the roof. And then time, you know, as so often happens, we went our separate ways. And now he's this big shot guy at Barstool Sports, which I love because I'm in prison. And I wonder if he even knows who I am anymore. So for him to hear you saying that you remember those times fondly. Yeah. And that you felt a little bit bad about the fact that his family was so mired in crime. (laughs) They um, weren't, though. Like his, his mom was really normal. Do you know that for sure? Yes. How? Because I know. But it sounded like to me you didn't really have a great handle on how much crime they <laughs> Dude, were involved in. This was like in the first. This place. was like in fourth grade, and then like we still knew each other for the next ten years. I know, and you said things just got worse from that point. Or this is getting way too specific. No, no. I mean, now it's like now it's like everyone from my town knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, every good. single person. I think we all need to help these kids. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we they're do. They're fine. They're probably doing great. No, it sounds like they're in worse shape than ever. No, no. We might be they're the voice. Thriving. This is is this what you did on Mean Girls? No. <laughs> we're gonna have to fucking chop this whole episode. <laughs> we're have to fucking destroy this whole episode. Tyler just threw out the whole episode. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> from the troubled kids we can move on they're good people are you but you said you haven't kept up with them i haven't kept up with a lot of people i've only I, the only two people i only talked to three people from my home but it sounded like you chose to not maintain a maybe, friendship maybe with like, those maybe like probably like eight max because we were never we were never like out of school friends after fourth grade 
Why? We just weren't. You just do when you're when you're that young, you switch your friend group a lot. Really? And then I met my good friends probably in ninth grade. Did he not fit with them? We were they never crossed paths. Were you at a different school? No. How big was your school? Like a thousand people. Oh, it's a big school. So it's 250 kids per class. So there's a, there's a relatively decent chance that you probably wouldn't have seen him that often in the halls. Were you in more accelerated classes than he was? No. You were both. In, did you have classes with him? Yeah. Up and, until like senior year. And you chose not to really acknowledge him or. No, we like sat next to each other and talked like every day. So oh, I see, told you, dude, I told you that we were friends well, up that, until that, we graduated. Well, then. But you said you grew apart and that you had your different friends now. Dude, because you have school friends and then you have out of school friends. You have kids that you sit next to and you become friends with them and you talk to them every day. But you're not like, hey, let's go out after this. But don't you think maybe he wanted that? He had friends. How do you know? Because I, I would I would see him doing stuff. Out of school? Like on his Instagram stories and stuff. He'd be posting videos with friends of with, his. Of them on the roof? Yeah, they doing, actually were on the roof Doing the shit that you Smoking used to weed. do? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You abandoned him. No, I did not. You, Dude, we were friends. We were friends probably in, in fourth grade. And then we probably didn't become friends again until junior year of high school. Oh, you found each other again? No, we just started having classes together again. And I was like, what's up? Oh, that's actually kind of a nice story. No, it's really every single person in the world has that exact same story. No, that's not true. Yes. A lot of people. Well, you met your friend and you met your best friend in fucking preschool. And then you guys became stayed friends forever. <sighs> well, no, I can't say that. But I can say that a lot of people don't sort of actively choose to distance themselves from a friend early on in life. Go years and years. But it wasn't, sort of, it wasn't my, my parents made me. Yeah. Either way, however yeah. it is, he knew that you were shunning him. No, no, no. <laughs> you dude. don't just go from sleepovers. Dude, when you're that young, when you're that young, it's just like you're all of a sudden, oh, this kid's coming to sleep over. I barely even know him, but my parents said that he's coming to sleep over. That's, you're downplaying it. No, is you, that my right? That you happens. wouldn't have asked your parents, when you're that mom, young. When you're mom, that young, all of a sudden your mom's like, oh, Bob was sleeping over tonight. And you're like, all right, cool. Uh, but hang we'll on a second. It's not like, no, wait a minute. Wait a second. I don't know that I buy that. Watch porn. You definitely told your parents, mom, dad, I want to go to what's his you don't, you don't have to say his name definitely not saying his name yeah you would say you would say i want to go let's call him let's call him davy yeah davy. We're, i'm gonna go to davy's house uh can you talk to his parents to coordinate the exchange you know make sure that you drop me off and not pick me up whatever all of that what's their address you had to do all that back then because you're not taking yourself there you're not biking there i presume you said no, you got I think picked I did. up i think we lived pretty close to each other but you said you got picked up yeah so your mom had to coordinate a pickup time from the sleepover. Yeah, I guess. So I'm assuming she probably spoke to his parents on the phone. Yeah. Right. Which means that the whole thing was organized, which yeah. means that the friendship was chosen. It was, it ran deeper than you're allowing. I don't think it did. I know it did. And then you guys, you got picked and then up. I by probably your... got picked up. And then my mom was probably like, Hey, blah, blah, blah is coming to sleep over tonight. And I was like, okay. I don't really like him that much, but that's fine. No, no, that's not what happened. No, that's what your happen. mom picked you up and saw you had a scar on your neck from running into the yeah. wire and, and that you'd gone to her, to the, the guy's hall. house and he hadn't treated you. His parents hadn't treated you the way that she would have no, wanted. He did spray some shit on my neck and then gave me a band aid. Yeah, probably something. the wrong shit. <laughs> she probably knew it was the wrong shit. <laughs> At which point she said, I don't want you hanging out with him anymore. And you said, fine, okay. And that's what ended the friendship. And it wasn't until junior year of high school where you finally said, you know what? I have a sense of autonomy and maybe no, even dude, he was like, we sat next to each other in class. Let's sit yeah, next to each but other. You wouldn't have been open seats. You wouldn't. OK, fine. But you still wouldn't have opened up that avenue of communication unless you had been willing at that point to say, I stand on my own two feet. I'm an older man now. I'm a young man. I can make decisions for myself. I don't even really remember why my mom said I shouldn't hang out with this kid anymore. Davey, want to hang out I again? I definitely knew why. At that point, it's like, I, I, obviously I knew why. Did he? He knew. He wasn't stupid. I don't think he knew that I wasn't allowed to hang out with him. So then he probably took it really personally. Dude, you don't take things personally when you're that young. 
You're just like, oh. I think you take it more personally. No way. What, he's your best friend. Yes. You guys are like As really, kid, yeah. you're really good friends. Dude, we hung. That was the first time I had ever slept over. At All right. House. What? One sleepover one and sleepover. done. Yeah. Dude, let me tell you something. If I had a buddy come over <laughs> and sleep at my house, if I went to the trouble of telling my mom, mom, can you talk to so-and-so's mom? T.C. Half and Reffer, right? I love T.C. Half and Reffer. I looked up to this kid, but he was a little bit rough around the edges. I knew it was a risk. And I said, mom, can you talk to T.C. Half and Reffer? his mom and he would shoot they did they talked and tc came over and spent the night with me and that was the last sleepover he was ever willing to do i would be offended i would, I be, would be more offended if he was someone that i was that we had like 10 sleepovers and then all of a sudden it was just never again no man i think one I think and done is not that you'd bad. feel judged you would feel like what's wrong with my house what's wrong with me no because he lived in a nice ass house you didn't you said it was a drug den <laughs> no it was a nice drug den though. i'm picturing something out of like a, a euphoria no dude he lived in like a nice ass house he lived in one of the nicest parts of our town yeah so even more to the point that you probably would have wanted Actually, to yeah. keep Going. Actually, now that I think about it, all the drug dealers lived in the nicest part of town. Okay. Because they were all just like, their parents would do drugs. Yeah. Because they're like rich as fuck, and they're like, let's just smoke weed. So he, Davey knew. Like, right, I guess I'll smoke weed too. My Davey never knew why does. you didn't want to hang out with him again, but you, uh, and you didn't tell him. I don't know. Maybe I did tell him. All right. Well, rack your memory for one second. When, <laughs> when you guys, when you mended fences as juniors in high school, was there a moment of like, hey, man, Not water under all. the bridge? Not it's been even a while. A Not even a little bit. Whatever happened all those years ago. Whatever happened 10 years I ago. I thought I showed you a good he time. He probably didn't even remember. He definitely remembered me getting decapitated, though. That was hard to I forget. Think he, I think he remembered. So um, just right off the bat, though, then you guys were right back in your old groove. Dude, we, were back in our, we were back in a groove of being like. This teacher fucking sucks. I yeah, hate this class. You he's bonded like, yeah, over that me too. Yeah, right. That was the furthest groove we got into, and then he dropped out halfway through that year. Oh. <laughs> For real? I told you he dropped out of high school. Dude. I didn't know it was that year. Yeah, I dude. I thought you had a little more time. No, he dropped out like junior year. You you're just telling me that all of a sudden one day you sat down in your assigned seat and he never showed up. Yeah, and then he never showed up again. Did he t did he tell you he was planning to drop out? No. He I remember we had a group project and I wasn't in his group because it was like two and two and he had the whole group project on his computer and then the day it was due he just never came back and the other kid got fucked. Oh, uh, I mean I'm that's uh, pretty irresponsible for them to let him put it on his computer I don't knowing think anyone his, knew he was going to drop out knowing his family history. I <laughs> Um, I mean that laptop was definitely paid for with <laughs> no dude it dirty was ten provided bills. by from the school. The school would give us a laptop, and then you got to give it back. Yeah, and I bet you they he didn't give it back and traded it for fucking needles. I don't think I gave mine back either, to be honest. Mm. Actually, I know I didn't because I had it up until I got hired at Barstool and they sent me a new one. Well, that's nice to know. That's where the Massachusetts taxpayers' dollars are going. So they actually ended that entire deal with our school. They did? Yeah, because no one gave their laptop back. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> and there's just nothing they could do about it. Yeah. All right, well, hold on a second. We're, uh, there's so much more that I, I, I need there's to know. nothing. I'm there so, can't be anything more. Now I'm completely hooked. Now I'm completely hooked. <laughs> so you guys are bonding. You're rebuilding the rapport. I'm assuming at that age you probably exchanged cell phone numbers. Because you're talking about, oh, I hate this teacher, blah, blah, blah. This know sucks. If There must have been some feelings that were stirred up that had been lying dormant for all those years. No, I think you, it was like, oh, I have this class. And then he would either be there or he wouldn't be there. He missed a lot. Yeah. There was no part of you that thought maybe I should look out for my friend. <laughs> check in with him. Like, yo, dude, you've dude, missed a lot of classes. This was literally just someone that I sat next to in class. Would, don't you think if he heard you say that, he'd be a little hurt again? Dude, I How actually. How many times are you going to ruin this kid's life? Now, now that I think about it, he probably doesn't even fucking remember me. That's a cop out. I don't buy that for one second. I do. He's probably like, what that? He, yeah. No chance he doesn't remember you. I bet you this kid's going to, he lives in Boston? Lives near Boston? I don't know where he lives. Next time you're in Boston, he's going to be at your show. 
With a gun. Yeah. Fucking probably with a gun now. Yeah. Yeah. Or a nice whole fucking debacle. Hold on. That we're going to have to remove from the show. No, no, no. This is the best part. They're going to come after you. That's fine. And they're People dangerous. come after me all the they're time. They're dangerous. I've learned I've learned uh how to blend in. <laughs> oh, no. I've I've got some moves. Oh, they would get you quick. <laughs> I don't know they about that. They would have that. fun with you. Don't deflect. They would have fun with you. We them. are on you they would, and your they would friends. play with you. Your friends. No. <laughs> yeah. I would, they would love you. I would get right in with the clan. <laughs> I would go right in with the white supremacists and They're not white supremacists. They're not racist. <laughs> in prison? No, those guys. Oh, I thought you Why were talking- Why are you going to prison? Because, I, I don't know. That was just what we were talking about. Oh, at no point were we talking about that. <laughs> I thought you said they would get you, they would eat you alive, and that made me think prison. No, I meant they're going to find you and they're going to fucking- Who's they? Oh, they got a crew. This is your boy. They got, a, they got a crew. Your boy. So you are admitting that he's really in bad- He's in a bad- I have no idea. Running with the wrong crew. I have no idea, dude. I literally have no idea. It's like the I more ask things around, change. I'll ask around after this. The more things change, the more say, they- Say, has, has anyone heard from this kid in a while? Stay the same. I thought you said his, his mom really tried to clean things up for them. I think she did. But he'd already dropped out. How did she not? I don't know if him? he like dropped out or if he just started getting homeschooled or some shit. No chance. There's no chance. I think he might have. She thought. Or he that got like his whatever a GED. And his mom supervised that because she sounds to me like a, a straight shooter. <laughs> She's probably the hero of the story. It's All really, I know is I, I I think that they're probably doing pretty well now. Well, the the, and the I'm big happy for them. the big question. And I hope that they're doing great. We have things. one question from all of this, and the big question that we have to clarify is whether or not the mom ripped him out of school to homeschool him and get him back on track, or whether he dropped out of his own volition. And I don't think you can just drop out when you're a junior. I think you need like parents permission. I don't think, dude, I don't think that the school can stop you. If you just stop showing up, it's illegal. If you're under a certain age, you can't do that. Unless they're like, unless you're like have proof of like you're being homeschooled or you're transferring schools. Yeah, but some people, some kids are just too far gone and they're untraceable. Probably like your friend. No, he definitely was not untraceable. I mean, sounds like he was like a drifter. (laughs) No. No, I think he he was dude. We're right now. By the what we're describing, tracks. what we're describing is a kid who like smoked weed in high school. I, I mean, <laughs> like, I like, think it was it's, it's blown out of proportion. I think we both know in was, all senses. It was way more. Th- this is a kid that. who like went to school, smoked weed after school, and then in, when he was in high, was school, he smoking before school? Yeah, probably. Yeah, he was along with every other person that I went to high no, school. No, he was yeah. the he was the ringleader. No, no. He said my dad left me some before he left. Maybe, but that wouldn't be the first time that's happened. I bet you he <sighs> idolized his father. I have no idea. I think he probably glamorized. Maybe, we, maybe you should have him on your podcast. That, well, you need to give me his name and I'm going to reach out to him as soon as I get off this because I have so many goddamn questions because you're I'm refusing. I'm definitely not giving you his name. You know what's Dude, funny? you grew up in Maine. There was probably you something. people that were like growing weed with their parents. Have you noticed that like what he'll do in, in answering these questions is to be like, dude, I have no idea. Well, actually what happened was his mom and then he'll get real specific. It's like, dude, fucking pick up, make up your mind. Are you gonna give us the story or not? You keep Dude, telling it. The story it so, ended. The story ended thirty minutes. You're being ago. so playful. And this was coy. all about. This is all just about me getting decapitated. You're teasing us. This you're like from me getting decapitated to being like a fucking yeah. You're Dude, like this kid is like a is like a wealthy family from Massachusetts. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. This is what you're doing. You're good. like I don't know anything. Why are you getting so specific? Well, actually, you know, he sat next to me junior year and dropped out halfway through the year. You know way more about this family than you want us to know, and I'm just trying to get the goddamn story for their sake because i know that kid's in trouble no, and he's, he's not. listening and he no. wants our help for god's sake harry for god's sake he does not he for does his not. sake he what asked, is his name don't remember okay nor will i be giving out any more details on the story well, that's what you think we all know <laughs> we know how fucking easy it is to get shit out of you we know um all right, fine. Well, listen, wh- wh- he knows if we're talking about him, right? Because he would know based on the fact that you spent the night, decapitation, 
He fourth definitely grade. knows right off the decapitation thing. Yeah, and then that his dad was a drug dealer. I don't think he was a drug dealer. Or a big drug guy. His parents got divorced. I think Mom his dad, dad smoked weed. Dad, Mom kicked people dad also, out of the house. This was back when like weed was illegal. Like People looked at it a lot different. Yeah, I remember that. Now it's like if a, do, if a dad smokes weed, no one gives a shit. No, they think he's cooler. Back then, this was like, a, oh my God, they smoke weed? Yeah. Now it's like... Like, dude, they they're 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 normal people. They're good folk. Man, you really walked, good American. You really folk. walked it back on that family, huh? <laughs> you really do think they're listening? Yes. <laughs> I mean, now I think it's going to get back to them because if we're honest, if I'm taking my own evaluation of this family, which again has been culled entirely and exclusively from information you have given me. <laughs> you are my only conduit to this. I don't, uh, this family that I have painted in my mind. It is troubled youth, <laughs> addict, father, criminal, and heroic mother. And Dude. they are all just doing their best, <laughs> but they're never going to be happy again in their lives. <laughs> They're probably doing great, and I wish them nothing but the best. Fine. <laughs> now you're tied to this. I will. I will die. I'm, <laughs> I, I. I will go down with this ship. I don't give a shit. I don't know these fucking people. <laughs> you're going to when they show up at your front door. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be like, "Hey, come on in. There's plenty of drugs here. You fucking <laughs> bad people. You derelict <laughs> excuse for the American dream." Oh Jesus. <laughs> They're good folk. They're good Massachusetts folk. Yeah, I bet. I bet they are. Uh, well, what else is going? <laughs> <laughs> what are we at? Like an hour and forty-five. <laughs> Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Nice. Nice. Jesus, those are the Thirty-four. Longest, those are the longest hour of my. That was life. really good. I'm really glad we got there. That was like thirty-four Holy minutes shit. of that. Yeah, that was great, dude. That was a good segment. Oh, by the way, if this if Brown's ever out again, I want to meet another member from your past because we can <laughs> no. we can do this. We can do this all. I would gladly day. tell you about other people from my past. This is just one that's this is going to end up being a bad situation. They're the for most. Me. They're the most rep. They're the most noteworthy. I'm going to start getting phone calls in the middle of the night. No, you won't. And by the way, what does it even matter? You're awake. You don't have a middle of the night, from yeah, what I understand. Yeah. You receive a, t a phone call at 2 p.m. You're like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Whereas I'd be like, uh, hello. 2 p.m.? 2, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Sorry. Damn, you're slow. <laughs> Damn, Francis doesn't wake up until 3 p.m. <laughs> Wish I could have that job at Barstool. Hey, your birthday's coming up. In like a month and a half. That's Actually, cool. now it's like a month. Nice. Yeah. You gonna do anything fun? Um, I don't know. Can I ask you a different question? Maybe we'll do the case race. Does it ever strike you as um, just super peculiar that if you were living, let's say, a more normal life for someone in your shoes... Then you'd be in your senior year of college right now. Um, no, not really. You don't even envision that track. You don't go that. You don't have that path in your mind. No, I mean, I went to college for a year. weren't into it. I just hate school. Yeah. I don't like doing like math and shit. But I don't think that, that when I when I think of college, I'm not thinking about that. You know, I didn't really go to like a party school. Where'd you go? DePaul. Where is that? Chicago. That was more of like a go to a bar. Like I'd be doing the same shit that I do now. There was there wasn't like frat parties or like parties. Would you have any idea what you would have wanted to study? I was studying film. Really? Yeah. Which is a fake major. To be a director? No, to be a screenwriter. Interesting. All right. Well, that's relatively adjacent, I think, now yeah. to what you do now. That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, uh, but I guess you're right. There's no point to have seen that through. No. This is far the better option. Yeah. Is there any part of you that worries you missed out on some of your youth by start by entering the workforce as early as you did? 
Do you feel like you've missed no. sort of uh, foundational because the people experiences? that I hang out with, like call him. I think he's giving me all the youth that I need <laughs> when we're going out to like 5 a.m. on a Tuesday together. No, I know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't think that those. I mean, I still I'm still like I still have all my friends. Yes, but is there a, is there a sort of a invisible gulf between you guys in that you have such different experiences? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, like I my my friends who are in college still. I mean, for the ones that are, I don't. It doesn't really seem like I'm missing much. Do they envy that you have have an income? Probably, yeah. And theoretically a jump start on your career. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's like, uh, I mean, my friend Bo, he's goes to community college and works and he's transferring to university of Denver, I think. Hmm. So his college experience has been the same as mine. Right. Like he just goes to class. He doesn't like know anyone from his school. Ah, he has like friends outside that he's like been with for years now. And then, yeah, and then I have two friends who are in school still, but they don't like, they're not really like, I think COVID fucked everyone a lot. Yeah, like true. Like there's not like, like my buddy was in a frat when he was a freshman and it was like the biggest frat at his school. And then like COVID came and they were doing parties still during COVID and their frat got fucked. Well, I think that's the huge silver lining is knowing that you would have had an, an completely interrupted college experience. I would have had a whole other year and like a half of Zoom classes. Yeah. So I've only missed like a year and a half. In a way, you dodged one of the great bullets. Well, that's why I dropped out. Oh, really? Yeah. You were going to try to do both? Yeah, I was going to do bar stool and go to school. And then they announced that we were doing Zoom classes for the whole next year. And I said, no, thank you. Wow. Were your parents okay with that? No. How did you put your foot down? I said, I'm going to do this for a year. And if it doesn't work out, I'll go back to school. And they were okay with that? Oh, yeah. Because I was like, I'm not going to do Zoom classes. because it's like a waste of time. Right. And then we did. And then I did that. I did Barstool for a year. And I didn't even know if I was going to stay at Barstool because I wasn't really doing anything. Mm -hmm. And then I got brought on the yak. And then we started Son of a Boy Dad. And then I started doing stand up like all around that same time. Wow. That's a lot so of So pretty much the whole first year I was here, it was just kind of like I was just existing. Right. I didn't have any friends at all. At, at the company? Like I had like I was friends with like Nick and KB, but like we really wouldn't like hang out a lot. I mean, we hang out now, but it's like, I mean, Nick's not like a big going out guy. Mm-hmm. Like we'll like, get dinner together. That's fun. But like I didn't have like, like I, I, I like wouldn't do anything and I was living with like strangers. Right. So I would like literally just lay in my bed and go to work and play video games and play video games and go to the gym. Are you happier now? Yeah. I feel like you're a much more fully realized version of yourself now. Well, I just am busy as fuck all the time. It's good. Yeah. That's what you need to be. You have the energy for it. Yeah. You're a young man. Yeah. But yeah, so. And then my parents actually wanted me to go back to school after my first year here. But you said no. And I actually enrolled in a class and then I dropped the class within a week. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck that. Right. I was like, dude, maybe school's awesome. And then I went to one <laughs> lecture and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this shit. Right. That so would have been back at DePaul. So I dropped out again. From DePaul? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Dropped out twice, actually. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I remember I had a fucking, uh, I had to call my like counselor, like my guidance counselor or whatever, your advisor. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm looking to uh, like enroll in a class. And she was like, so mean. Oh, no. She's like, well, it looks like you haven't been in a class in over two, in over a year. And I was like, yeah, I was taking some time off working. And she's like, huh. really? Yeah, it was like it was like really weird. Do do your parents feel like that one year that you spent in school that they've been bilked from of it? That you bilked that out of them? 
took it from them? Like that, that you owe them for it? Uh, no, I think they're probably pretty fucking pumped that I'm actually not in school because they got, they, they don't pay for three I mean, I, years. Yeah. yeah. I provide for myself completely. That's pretty nice. So they're probably pretty pumped about that. That's cool. But they don't pay my rent or food or anything. That's great. Have you got a credit card? We've talked about this a lot of times. No, you still no. don't have one. Yeah. It, I cannot tell you how angry that makes but me. But I'm getting one. I'm supposed to meet with you. You've been dude. saying that to me for so <laughs> fucking long. The fact that you don't have a credit no, card. No, I'm and actually you won't I'm, let I'm me supposed to meet with a dude actually tomorrow. To do, that you points. won't you yeah. won't let me just do that I'm for you. With my business manager. That I can't just sit down with you and, and with, for in ten minutes. We're gonna go over to Chase. Explain to you Pick this a is card. a credit card. This is how you're gonna link this account. <laughs> you're gonna need to pay it every month. And yeah, keep we're track. going to Chase. We're picking up a card. And I'm gonna be see you who's this lounge. fucking guy. Did you make this guy up too? <laughs> no, it's a real dude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his life story? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know him at all. Your business manager? You have a business manager? Uh no. But he's like a business manager. How'd you meet him? Recommended. Okay. Yeah, and he's just bringing me over. I feel he's like I want to. I want to check. I want to talk to that guy. He's just setting up my account. Does like, he yeah, work like, for like Chase? I'm setting up an LLC. Okay. And he's setting it up for me. All right. If you don't have a credit card in in a week, I'm, I'm stepping to. in. I'm going to. I'm probably not. I'm probably not going to do that tomorrow. What do you mean? <laughs> Why not? I don't know. It just sounds like a pain in the ass. Ah, oh, dude. Oh, my God. I'm telling you. I'll tell you what. I'm more of a liquid guy. He and I go I keep out. It all in cash. And he fucking pays. He's like, oh, here's, let me pay for this one. And he gives him his debit card. And then they're like, what's your pin? And it's like, are you fucking kidding right now? Do you know how much money? I, I know you're spending a good amount of money and you would be especially spend shit. Are you you're telling me you're paying for your you pay for your flights? Yeah. With your debit card. Yeah. <laughs> That's makes me sick that truly makes me sick credit cards are meant to accrue travel benefits specifically every time you and i travel if we go to laguardia together i can bring you in maybe to the delta lounge as my plus one but i only get so many of those dude i'll be in the i'll be in the delta lounge before you even know it no you won't yeah you won't when you keep paying with cash like your fucking pablo escobar dude at a certain point they're gonna see my rockland trust card and they're gonna go that Holy thing. shit. You're, that the guy, thing you're, the guy, so you're the guy that's keeping Rockland Trust open. Just enrages me. Like, yeah, you can come in the lounge. They're probably going to add a Rockland Trust lounge. They're going to name it Harry's Lounge. <laughs> you, bro, <laughs> yeah. you need. For me specifically. You need. You Did you ever see Breaking Bad? Yeah. You saw it, right? Yes. You know the scene where um, Skyler brings Walter into the um, storage unit? With all the money. With all the money? Yeah. <sighs> And that's like me. She's like, I spray it for ringworm or whatever, you know, crystal. There's some kind of bug that could theoretically eat the cash, I think. But it's just lying there. And it's purposeless. It's not growing. Well, it's growing in that they keep adding to it because they're adding to it. But it's not growing in and of itself. It's not invested. It's not kicking off points for a potential vacation that you might take. It's not gaining you status so that you'll have a more comfortable seat on an airline just from booking a normal flight or picky. those types of, you remember how much you liked that, uh, that upgrade you got at the hotel from that guy who's going to hook me up. Remember that? It was just, no, I was actually going to say what I was going to say about that was I actually didn't like it because it was just more room to make a mess with. I don't believe you. You come from humble beginnings. <laughs> You come from a place where a, a, a sleepover is spent on someone's roof, drinking beers in fourth grade, long before the entire family had collapsed under the weight of their own lost dreams and crippled souls. That was a fun night for you. It was. And that's still, and then you like that because they had Look. a big house. I'm going to get a credit card tomorrow. No, you're fucking not. I'm you getting just either, told me you're not. We're either doing an Amex or we're doing a Chase. What's the good one? There's a reserve. The Chase Sapphire Reserve yeah, is a good one. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, that's fine. I can live can with that. You get that. into the Delta Lounge with that? I think so. Uh, you might a couple times a year. And you get unlimited. You get the Centurion Lounge with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. 
the hell's that? It's a really good lounge. Better than the Delta? It's, it's on par. It's better. I like Delta because I fly Delta. I could see if I could get you one uh, plus one. On. I have access to the Centurion Lounge thanks <laughs> no, to my no, Amex. Not, not when I get in it. I'm actually going to make a special request. There is don't. no lounge you could get into <laughs> that I can't get into. I guarantee you I have too many credit cards. I'll get in. Yeah, yeah, wait. you I can't wait. In. I'm gonna get to the airport before you when we go to San Francisco. No way, Jose. I'm gonna get there three hours early and I'm gonna be like, Where are you at? I'll the, be uh, I'll be like, I'm in the I've already I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the Rockland Trust Lounge. No, I'm not in- <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we shall we wrap? That's it. That's yeah, a good episode of Son of the Boy Dad. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Right. I'm Francis Ellis. That's a little Sasquatch. Thanks so much, Son of a Boy Dad listeners, especially you specifically out there, <laughs> young man. You know who you are. We're, we've been talking about you for the majority of the episode. Um, Hairball, where can we find you on the road? I already said it. You already said it. Guys, I'll be with Harry in San Francisco at Cobbs at the end of April. And then we're on to Charlestown, West Virginia. That's going to be a really fun show because the two of us are going to hang out afterwards. And we'll be gambling on the casino floor with you. That's our fun, interactive meet and greet. Come hang out with us, lose some money on the blackjack tables, whatever it is that we like to do. Barstool Sportsbook, we're all over it. Charlestown, West Virginia is May 12th. Tickets for that are available on Harry's link tree. That's Lil Sass's link tree on his Instagram or his Twitter or my website, FrancisSellis.com. We love you. That's Son of a Boy Dad. Thank you so much. Goodbye.